after two months, what is Apple's lockdown mode really like to use? Lockdown mode, marketed as an extreme privacy and security setting, is now available for all their major products, including iOS, iPadOS, and macOS devices. And we've been getting a lot of questions about this feature from all of you, what it does, how extreme it is, and if you should use it. And today, I'm answering your questions about lockdown mode after a quick message. This segment is brought to you by ourselves, specifically Go Incognito, our over four hour course taking you through what you need to know about privacy and security. It's designed for anyone, regardless of technical knowledge and experience, and the goal is for you to finish feeling independent so you don't have to rely on anyone to make decisions for you, even ourselves. You can access the free course on YouTube, or there's also the paid version, which removes the segments in each lesson, improves production quality a bit, adds quizzes, checklists, and gives you the ability to directly chat with me along the way. I also wanna say that we're working on a V2 to go incognito, which is much more updated for the current world. And all of you who join premium now will be grandfathered into future iterations of the project, which will likely cost more, just being real with you. So I do encourage anyone interested in going incognito now or later to hop on that as soon as possible. It's literally $1 a lesson or less if you're a student or paying with Monero. All links are below and enjoy the rest of the video. To cover logistics, Lockdown was released with iOS 16 only on the iPhone, and it was released later for the iPad and MacBook in late October with the rollout of iPadOS 16.1 and macOS Ventura. Lockdown was likely a response to a lot of the negative press Apple was receiving with targeted state actor attacks against its devices. None of these attacks were targeting most people, but rather those in high positions. But Apple's image of privacy and security was still being called into question, and maybe Apple just genuinely cares about protecting those individuals. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? While the website and the prompts when enabling the feature give a general breakdown of what to expect, it's really hard to decipher what some of these things actually mean or do. So let's dive into my experience so I can share with you exactly what these things do. The first and largest area where I instantly noticed changes was in iMessage. If you send a contact a GIF, then reopen the chat later, it'll just disappear, but it did send properly, don't worry. In fact, previews for attachments and files are generally a mixed bag in iMessage. The worst effect of this is if you click on a contact, you lose the ability to have a central place of seeing all images you two have sent in the chat. I would argue this is the largest impact lockdown mode has on iMessage since it's hard to locate old photos. Maybe the only more difficult thing is losing the ability to search for a specific message. Yes, the search is broken with the exception of just searching for contacts and open conversations. You can't search for words or messages or really anything else, which really sucks. Aside from this, link previews are disabled, so you have to manually open links to view them, which is generally not an issue with the exception of someone sending you something like an Apple Maps link, which converts poorly without a link preview, but it's still doable. The final iMessage impact is sharing your focus status. I don't think many people use this, but you're able to share with your contacts if something like do not disturb is on. But with lockdown, you're no longer able to do that. You can view your contact status, but you can't share your own with your contacts. The second largest impact of lockdown mode is likely Safari. Starting with behind the scenes stuff, you should expect a speed decrease. In most situations, not enough for you to probably notice unless you're comparing two devices side by side, but in benchmark environments, there can be a pretty drastic difference in performance thanks to Apple disabling certain features that could be abused to attack people's devices. This can also impact battery life, but my guess is it's nothing significant, and even the speed differences likely aren't drastic in non-benchmark environments. The more obvious and larger limitation of Safari is fonts, and this is very obvious very quickly. Here's Crypty, a private and secure note-taking solution, without and with lockdown mode. Unless you know exactly where to click, this is practically unusable, and it's not Crypty's fault. Every site will suffer similar issues. Luckily, you can add exceptions very easily by just going into website settings and toggling lockdown off for that specific site. That's really it. Some sites might not work well on first visit, so you add an exception and boom, you're good to go forever. It's not a huge trade-off in my book. The real issue though is third-party browsers and how they're impacted by lockdown. So for those who don't know, Apple requires all browsers on iOS and iPadOS to use the same browser engine as Safari, which is WebKit. So whether you use Brave, Firefox, Chrome, or insert any browser here, they're all actually running the same browser engine as Safari with just their own features on top of it. This means that all of the protections that lockdown imposes in Safari 
carry over into third-party browsers. And unlike Safari, third-party browsers don't seem to have the ability to add exceptions, and Safari exceptions don't carry over. This means you can't do something like use Crypty inside Brave without lockdown mode. This pretty much restricts you to Safari for anything that requires an exception from lockdown. This is a very large limitation for me as someone who does enjoy using third-party browsers on iOS. Aside from this, I only had one website after two months that actually didn't work on lockdown. And it was Skip, whose TOTP prompt was entirely broken with lockdown mode enabled. And on that note, it's also broken on their application, which you can't add exceptions for, meaning their app is actually entirely broken on lockdown devices, since people with 2FA can't even log in. I will say though, with the exception of Skiff, I haven't had any other app or website legitimately break with lockdown mode on. It's always just the ugly font rendering problem, which while ugly and makes things incredibly hard to navigate, doesn't actually typically break functionality. But again, your mileage will vary. While my app experience was pretty much unchanged for all apps I tested, like you can use Signal pretty much the same exact way, there may be apps you use that give you issues, but it's at least not a common problem that I can attest to. Before moving to macOS, there's a couple more things on iOS and iPadOS you should know about. First, FaceTime calls from people you haven't called are blocked. I don't think this is a huge issue for most people, but it's something to be aware of. Shared albums in photos have several limitations, which could be an issue for families or people who use this feature. And third-party profiles are blocked, specifically the installation of new ones. If you have a profile installed already, you can enable lockdown and it should work just fine. You just can't install any with lockdown enabled. If you don't know what profiles are, you don't need to worry about this. Now, you might be wondering about Mac OS. I'm going to be honest with you. The iMessage and Safari restrictions from iOS are almost identical. And aside from that, the Mac OS experience feels pretty much the same as it did without lockdown. The only other thing I noticed was the accessory prompts when I plug in any accessory, which is actually really annoying since I use a docking station and I have to use the prompt every time I plug in. This accessory thing also impacts other devices. When you plug in an iPhone with lockdown mode into a MacBook with lockdown mode, now the iPhone has to be unlocked, the MacBook has to accept the accessory, and then sometimes, I haven't figured out when, the iPhone asks me to type in the password and trust the computer, even though I've trusted it several times in the past. I don't know if this is a bug or intentional design, but all I'll say is connecting peripherals, iMessage, and Safari are really the main impacts on macOS. A perk to macOS is browsers are not stuck to WebKit, so third-party browsers should feel completely unaffected, which is good or bad, depending on who you ask, though for people who want lockdowns protections, make sure you're using Safari. Before covering who this is for and if you should use it, let's summarize all the impacts of lockdown mode. The iPhone and iPad are impacted pretty much the same exact way, and I'd say it really boils down to iMessage features and browsers. If you use Safari exclusively with the exception of the performance difference, I don't think lockdown is a huge deal, given how simple it is to add exceptions to websites you frequently visit. If you use a third-party browser, however, it's rough, and it will likely bring you over to Safari to the sites you use that require exceptions, which may be quite a few. On macOS, same exact stuff with additional peripheral device annoyances, but with good third-party browser support. Outside those things, lockdown doesn't really impact anything else. You will still get to use all the apps you love with probably no impact to their functionality. You can still message people in iMessage and send them images and videos and have groups and make phone calls and use pretty much all the functions on your phone. I was very surprised given the marketing of it, how frankly mellow lockdown is. I actually think most of my friends and family members could turn it on and get by. They may get annoyed, for sure, but I think they could still use all the functions of their device, mostly interrupted. What I would value would be the reasoning behind why Apple decided on certain limitations and not others, like why is the search feature in iMessage disabled, but VPNs on lockdown mode still leak your web traffic? What's the threat model here? Why were these decisions made? I would love Apple to come forward and better answer these questions. But Henry, I don't care about your friends or family. What about me? So okay, what about you, dear viewer? Well, we can't answer that question without covering the privacy and security implications of lockdown. Lockdown mainly aims to reduce the attack surface of your devices, meaning it shuts down features and other functionality that can be abused for malicious reasons. Things like link previews, custom web fonts, JavaScript features that boost browsing speeds, none of these things are inherently harmful to your privacy and security, but they can be used as a point of attack by someone specifically targeting you, and that's what lockdown aims to prevent. With that said, it's worth mentioning that using lockdown does make you stand out more as your fingerprint or the uniqueness of your device is more unique, which can be used to track you around the internet. 
There are numerous tools that you can use that tell you if you use lockdown mode. I don't think this limitation is enough reason to not use lockdown mode if you need the protection, but it's a limitation you should be aware of either way, as it can jeopardize certain threat models, mainly those requiring anonymity. In my opinion, if you're not being targeted for anything specifically, you probably don't need lockdown. If you're someone who knows you always need to take the highest degrees of safety due to the nature of the situations you're in, the work you're doing, or the people who you work with, then this should definitely be a consideration. There's one exception to all of this though. If you're someone who's a privacy and security enthusiast or just someone who wants to help the cause, I encourage you to enable lockdown mode if you're able to use it. I say this because of the fingerprinting concerns. Some people need lockdown mode for some serious situations, and the fingerprinting concerns are valid, and you can partly assist in that battle by using lockdown mode yourself to make it a less unique attribute of Apple devices. It won't make the world's largest difference, but I am a firm believer that more people using lockdown mode means, first, Apple directly or indirectly knows that users value those features, people around you see that you value these features, you're gaining some privacy and security in the process, so there's still personal gain, and you may be helping people who are actually reliant on lockdown for dire situations. If you're on the fence at all, turning on and off lockdown mode is literally just a toggle in your settings followed by a reboot. That's it, you can turn it on and off at will with no impact whatsoever. So actually, I recommend everyone tests it out themselves to see what it's like. If you don't like it, turn it off, otherwise just leave it on and enjoy. I really like this feature and I'm happy Apple pushed it out. And no, lockdown mode doesn't make your device hack-proof or anything crazy like that. You can still infect your phone with malware, you can still install the Facebook app, and it will spy on you. Lockdown changes none of this. It's just one extra tool that you can apply for certain things in your journey. If you are an iPhone or MacBook user, we actually have device-specific, thorough guides that walk you through exactly how to make them as safe as possible. The guides were released before lockdown, so just make sure to keep this video in mind when you watch them. But there's an iOS and macOS guide. So we'll see you in those videos. Join our Patreon to join the list of names down below. You're all freaking awesome. And we'll see you next time on TechLore. Join our Patreon and check out those two videos.